Now, uh, my pleasure to introduce um, Senator Tom Carper of Delaware uh, to this morning's session. Senator Carper is the ranking member of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, which will have a, a lead role writing both in, an infrastructure package and the FAST Act reauthorization. He's also a senior mem member of the Senate Finance Committee. In short, Senator Carper will be helping <coughs> lead our battle on several fronts. Senator Carper has been a nationally recognized leader in public transportation since the 1990s when he was governor of Delaware, where I had the good uh, opportunity to meet him in 1994 and work with him. And as chairman of the National Governors Association, he championed the rights of states to flex their federal funding for passenger rail. Senator Carper is one of the nation's foremost champions for smart infrastructure investments, and we are thrilled to have the senator here with us today. Please welcome Senator Carper. Good morning. Try that one more time. Thank you, Paul. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's a live audience. This is good. It's my favorite kind. How many have ever been to Delaware? Raise your hand. You've ever been to Delaware? Not just paid the toll on I-95. Got out of your car, enjoyed tax-free shopping, no sales tax, more five-star beaches than any state in America. And uh, we're a state that actually believes in transit. And uh, we uh, can always do better. But... Uh, I was privileged to be governor of Delaware from 93 to 2001, and we did a, a lot of things. I'm very proud of work with a woman named Ann Camby. Ann Camby was our secretary of uh, transportation for those their years. And um, actually, I didn't work with her. I worked for her. And she was a, a wonderful, wonderful boss. I served on the Amtrak board for, uh, for four of those uh, years. She was appointed by uh, President Clinton. I used to drive him crazy. And... Uh, and with the request for funding for, for Amtrak, Mort right here, Mort is up here, and he and I were on the board to, together at the same time. And the last uh, month or so he was president, I remember um, about six or seven governors uh, who were Democrat and Republican who'd actually worked with him and his administration on, on different, uh, different uh, projects and issues. Uh, we were invited to come to the uh, Oval Office and to sit in the Oval Office with them. And uh, just kind of do a victory lap, just sitting there talking about our, uh, their, our uh, battles and some of the victories we, we won. And uh, we came to the end of, uh, I was the last governor to raise an issue, and I said, uh, you may not remember this, Mr. President, but uh, you were kind enough to uh, appoint me to serve on the Amtrak Board of Directors. And he sat there and he rolled his eyes, and he said, my biggest mistake. My biggest mistake. I thought to myself, well, maybe not your biggest. I don't know, but <laughs> but uh, he was he was great. We'd had a whole string of presidents before that that wanted to get rid of Amtrak and close out funding, and uh, he was uh, he was good. And his secretaries of transportation were good. Uh, and uh, today, uh, Amtrak. I just rode down on the train this morning, and uh, we had the train was packed. I don't take the, uh, the Acela, although we uh, developed the Acela when I was on the board, but uh, the train was packed. It was Northeast Regional, on time, and the on-time performance. The guy who runs the Northeast Corridor for Amtrak now uh, is, is a guy who used to work in my office, uh, and Stephen Gardner, and he's now the top guy at, uh, at Amtrak in the Northeast Corridor. Some say he might be uh, the president of Amtrak someday, which is a job I wanted, except I got waylaid and ended up running for the U.S. Senate instead. And I did that in part so that I could be here for uh, the speech this morning. <laughs> it's what you call prescient. I think it's called prescient. Uh, anybody here from uh, West Virginia? Anybody here from West Virginia? That's where, where I was born. Anybody here from Virginia? Anybody here from Virginia? Yeah. I grew up in Danville and Roanoke. And when I was a senior in high school, I won a Navy ROTC scholarship. And I went to uh, Ohio State. Anybody here from Ohio? I was a midshipman at Ohio State. And, Graduating, went off to Pensacola. Anybody here from Florida? Anybody from Florida, I was, uh, that's where I started my, in, Pen, in uh, Pensacola, started my training. And anybody here from Texas? Anybody from Texas? I went to Corpus Christi then and trained some more. And then California, anybody here from California? So, yeah. Lived in a um, place uh, called Coronado. Can you believe that? Five, five Lieutenant JGs all in the Navy, brand new. We just uh, got bought our first cars, and we lived on Coronado. Every day was perfect. And my wife says, what are the happiest days of your life, Tom? We've been married 33 years. And I, I always say, oh, the day I married you, honey. <laughs> Which is true, but I love being on Coronado. 
<laughs> it just, was just great. And uh, then later on, in, I was a midshipman uh, in Long Beach and a big jumbo tankers on, on one summer. And then uh, Palo Alto, we lived in Palo Alto and flew out in Moffett Field Naval Air Station throughout the Cold War, three tours in Southeast Asia. And, uh, uh, and ended up in Delaware, just kind of on a lark. And they ended up, they've let me be their treasurer, congressman, governor, and senator. Got an MBA at the University of Delaware. And uh, I have loved uh, transportation and transit forever. And uh, how many of you have loved working in this field forever? I mean. I hope so. It's just, it's so interesting, so interesting. I have a, a terrific speech uh, here that I'm tempted to read because it's been, it's one of the best speeches that I've ever read. <laughs> and uh, when I, I'm going to read, it won't take too long, and then I'll, we'll have some more fun. I'll talk, uh, I'll go off script. But uh, I, uh, I got the, uh, the honor of serving, I serve as a uh, senior Democrat on the Committee on uh, Environment and Public Works is, you know, it's, we deal with surface transportation. We, uh, we don't do transit. I used to be on the banking committee where we did transit, mass transit, and so forth. But uh, we focus on roads, highways, bridges. And we do a lot of water stuff, including Army Corps of Engineers and waterways and, and things like, uh, like that. Um, there is, uh, as you know, a bright line between committee jurisdiction Banking has their jurisdiction, we have our jurisdiction. And after we finish out what we're gonna do in terms of, uh, of authorizing surface transportation legislation and transit legislation, it's up to the Finance Committee to figure out how to pay for it. And I'll come back to that in just uh, just uh, a, a little bit. I, uh, I can just separate my pages. Sometimes my staff, just for fun, they glue my pages together. <laughs> That makes my speeches longer. They seem more substantive, but they're just longer. But uh, I don't know anybody, any of you riding a bus today? Anybody ride a bus today? I remember one of my all-time favorite travel days. I, I'm a real big multimodal guy. You probably are too. When I was trying to get to uh, Mackinac Island in uh, one of the Great Lakes. Anybody ever been to Mackinac, Mackinac Island? And uh, the... Uh, we're having a Democratic leadership conference, which is kind of the uh, centrist wing of the Democratic Party. And uh, I left my house in Wilmington, Delaware. I drove to the uh, Wilmington train station. I walked to the Wilmington train station uh, from the parking lot. I got on the train. I took the train from uh, Wilmington to BWI. Anybody here ever gone to BWI Airport? I got off the, got off the train, got on a shuttle. And it took the shuttle from uh, the, uh, the uh, train to the, uh, the airport and uh, went out to the airport again in one of those people movers. And they just moved us along with our, our luggage and finally got to uh, our gate and climbed on an airplane. We flew to Traverse City, Michigan. Anybody ever been to Traverse City, Michigan? We flew to Traverse City, Michigan. We got off the, uh, got off the uh, plane and we got on a bus, which took us to a ferry. And then we took a ferry across one of the Great Lakes, to Mackinac Island. We got off at Mackinac Island with our luggage, and we walked uh, off, and we got into a horse-drawn carriage, <laughs> which took us to our hotel. I didn't count those, but there's about seven or eight, about seven or eight. And we don't all do something quite that extreme every day. But uh, transportation isn't just our cars, it's just not buses, it's just not Uber, it's just not uh, the train, it's just not airplanes. It's all the above. It's all the above. And I say part of our challenge is to create a system that uses all those different modes and does it in a way that gets us where we need to go when we need to, to, to get there. I, I want to talk a little bit about climate change. One of the reasons why uh, I uh, enjoy working on transportation. I'm a senior Democrat, as I said, on the Environment Committee. But one of the reasons I enjoy working on transportation is the greatest source of carbon in our air comes from our mobile sources. And uh, it used to be coal fiber utility plants. It used to be uh, cement uh, uh, plants. Now it's, uh, it's the vehicles that we, we drive in. And one of our challenges is we prepare to reauthorize transportation, service transportation, and the Environment and Public Works Committee is to make sure that we do so in a way that recognizes that we have way too much carbon in the air and we need to reduce it. And sooner rather than later, we've had three reports in the last four months. Uh, one from the United Nations, one from 13 federal agencies, and another one just uh, again last week from uh, the United Nations saying we don't have forever to get, uh, to get our act together. For those of you who've ever been to Columbus, Ohio, on the Ohio State campus we have a, a research center there 
that used to be called the Polar Research Center has another name now. But uh, the folks who run it uh, from West Virginia, husband and wife research team, for years they've led uh, ex expeditions down to our equator and they climb the tallest mountains in the world along the equator and they go up to the top of these mountains and the ice caps, the snow caps on the top of the mountains and they have uh, equipment that enables them to drill through the, the, the ice caps, through the snow caps and as they go through, they go further back in time and measure carbon and uh, they have been able to measure back as far as 400,000 years ago. And the level of carbon on our air, uh, in our air is higher today than ever in the last 400,000 years. I was listening to NPR uh, today driving to the train station. They're doing a live interview with a sheriff in uh, a town in uh, Nebraska where they're having the flooding. They've had flooding out there apparently this place again and again and again. We, uh, we see the vestiges of, uh, of climate change and sea level rise. Uh, almost every day. It could be fires. We're having big fires down in Texas now. We've had fires on the, out on the West Coast bigger than my state in the last uh, year. We have uh, sea level, Delaware's uh, lowest lying state in America. Our state is sinking. The seas around us are rising. And uh, we have, uh, uh, not, we're not too, anybody here from Maryland? Anybody here from Maryland? We, uh, we have a place called Ellicott City. My wife and some of her girlfriends went there uh, just for uh, to be tourists a couple of months ago and to support that community. And they've had two 1,000-year uh, floods in the last 18 months. And uh, some people don't believe in climate change. They don't believe our, our planet's getting warmer. Uh, there's this, a great song by Stephen Stills. Uh, Stephen Stills uh, was uh, one of the founders of Buffalo Springfield. And uh, I once had the pleasure of hearing them in concert at the Golden Bear, which is a great rock and roll venue uh, in uh, Long Beach. You know, actually, uh, uh, one of the beaches are right outside of uh, L.A. And uh, he, uh, that, they group morphed into Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. But uh, Stephen Stills once wrote a song that started with this lyric. It said, uh, something's happening here, just what it is, and exactly clear. And I think with respect to our, our planet and uh, what's going on in temperature, extreme weather, it's becoming clear what it is. And one of the things we need to do is to address that in part by the work we're going to do on transportation, reauthorization. Part of that is uh, encouraging people to buy more energy efficient vehicles. I went to the Detroit Auto Show about 11 years ago, and the uh, car of the year, they always have the car of the year and the truck of the year as they start off the auto show. And uh, 11 years ago, the uh, car of the year was the Chevrolet Volt, V-O-L-T, and the Chevrolet Volt got uh, 38 miles per charge, electric charge, and then it was on gasoline, it was a hybrid. Uh, last year, the car of the year was the Chevrolet Bolt, B-O-L-T. It's just pure electric, it gets 140 miles on a charge. Um, I went to the Detroit Auto Show two months ago, and uh, I saw a dozen or more vehicles manufactured in this country, country and other places around the world that now get 250 miles per charge. And uh, that's a good thing, because uh, people are going to buy those vehicles, and they're, not, they're fun to drive. They don't put out any carbon. Uh, Hydrogen-fueled uh, vehicles that use, cell, uh, uh, use uh, fuel cells, they, uh, they produce electricity that, by doing that. And the, uh, the waste product uh, is like, like the water on your table. It's so clear that you can actually drink it. So that's where we need to go. But the, uh, the auto companies tell us that nobody's going to buy those vehicles unless we provide tax incentives for them to buy them. And nobody's gonna drive the vehicles unless we have across the country uh, charging stations and fueling stations for hydrogen so people can, can get fuel. And in my state, we've just gotten uh, a, a nice uh, a slug of money at uh, Delaware Department of Transportation. And we're using that to buy electric buses. I was out in the Park City, uh, Utah, uh, a couple of months ago, and they have a pretty good bus system there, all electric buses, and they have the charging stations as, 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 as well. And uh, that's uh, the future, and we need to be uh, making sure that the, the, the policies that, that we adopt are supportive of, of that. I've introduced legislation to create uh, corridors for fueling stations and charging stations all across our country where we have the, series, the, series, the greatest uh, deal of, uh, of, uh, of, of movement of people. The um, last thing I want to do is, is just talk about money. Uh, I mentioned Buffalo Springfield. Another one of my favorite songs has a lyric that starts off, 
They say the best things in life are free, but you can give them to the birds and bees. I want money. That's what I want. Whole lot of. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Uh, what the, uh, the American people seem to want is uh, more roads, highways, bridges, better transit, buses, subways, uh, rail, transit rail, uh, without having to pay for it. And we as uh, legislators and leaders uh, sort of let them get away with that. And uh, I always like to say things that are worth having are, are worth paying for. If you look at the, uh, the way we fund uh, roads, highways, bridges, it's so like a 50-50 deal across the country. The feds put up roughly half the money in Delaware, and the uh, state puts up the, uh, the other half through user fees. Through user fees, we've not raised our, gas, uh, uh, our gasoline tax federal. For 25 years, uh, it's, what is it, 18 cents? It's worth about half that. Uh, we have a, a diesel tax uh, for federally. It's 24 cents. It's actually worth now about half that. And uh, But you know what? States are starting to raise, and as you know, about 20% of the uh, federal taxes that we collect and go into the transportation fund. About half of them, um, about 20% of that money goes into transit, which is a good thing. And, uh, but unfortunately, we have about an $800 billion backlog for transportation projects in this country. $800 billion. And uh, I'd like to say it's getting uh, smaller, but it's getting bigger. It'll grow by about another $12 billion this year. The whole will get about $13 billion deeper next year. And meanwhile, uh, we say we're, we're, we just move money from the general fund to, to, to fill up the, the gap. We don't have the money in the general fund. We borrow money all around the world. And our national debt last year, just for one year, was uh, deficit was about eight, uh, $775 billion. This year we're on a, on a glide path to $850 billion. Next year we're on a glide path, just for one year, to a trillion dollars. And we just can't afford to continue to borrow money from the general fund, which doesn't have any money, to, uh, to replenish the, uh, the transportation fund, trust fund. If things worth having, they're worth paying for. So one of the biggest and maybe the toughest issues we face is how to pay for this stuff. How to pay for this stuff. And the states have responsibilities, and the states are actually stepping up and doing stuff. Uh, real stuff. And states like, like Utah, like Wyoming, that, uh, like New Jersey, where you maybe wouldn't expect them to vote for increases in the user fees. And they voted for very substantial increases. I think New Jersey by 30 cents. I think Wyoming maybe a dime. I think in uh, uh, Michigan, the new governor of Michigan has called for a 45 cent uh, per gallon increase in the user fees in that, in that state. And uh, do you know what happens? When uh, legislators and, and the governors run for re-election after having supported that, uh, they get re-elected. And if you look at all the races across the country in the last uh, decade, 95% of the Republicans who voted to raise those user fees, legislators, governors, have gotten re-elected. Uh, over 90% of the Democrats who voted to raise those user fees have gotten re-elected. And uh, the ones who vote against doing that have lost more often than, than the folks who actually voted for it. So don't tell me you can't do this stuff and, and, and get reelected. One of the things that uh, I'll be doing, I'll close with this, I think eventually we're gonna move away from uh, gas and uh, uh, diesel uh, uh, powered vehicles. And uh, what I saw at the Detroit Auto Show, if I wasn't convinced before, I'm convinced now. If we put in the right kind of infrastructure to support uh, folks who, who, who drive those sorts of vehicles. But, um, how do I say this? Eventually, you know, as more people buy hydrogen-powered vehicles, electric-powered vehicles, uh, they won't be driving vehicles that use gas or diesel. And the user fees will continue actually not to go up, but, but down, even if we raise them. And so we have to figure out a way to make sure that people who are using uh, our roads, highways, bridges are paying for them. And we actually are collecting money that actually goes for transit, too, at the same time. And I think eventually the road to the future is, a, uh, is vehicle miles travel. And we're, we have about a six or seven state uh, pilot going on to do that. Dell is one of those states, California is another. There are a bunch of other states, Oregon, that are doing that. And uh, that, uh, one of the things I hope we've been doing pilots for a couple of years is we'll do a hearing, some, maybe a series of hearings to find out what have we learned from the pilots on uh, vehicle miles travel that will uh, enable us to, to move toward the future and have a, a highway trust fund transportation trust fund that can not only pay for roads, highways, bridges, but the transit systems and the subway systems that, that, that we need as, as, as well. The last thing I'll say is this. 
Do any of you have a, do any of you have like a, like a, a cell phone? <laughs> People tell me when they don't like uh, the idea of a vehicle miles traveled uh, uh, approach because it's a, an invasion of their privacy. And uh, I say, really? And I ask them if they have a cell phone. And they say they do. And they say, uh, stay woke. <laughs> because if you think a vehicle miles travel are going to somehow invade your privacy, <laughs> you have a big surprise in store for you. Big surprise in store. Well, it's hard for us to agree on much around here. And uh, the president had said at a meeting, we had about six months ago in the White House on uh, transportation infrastructure. And he said, um, um, he asked me to like, kind of lead off the conversation. We had about seven or eight senators, rep representatives, and uh, about three or four cabinet secretaries. And he, he, he uh, said, I'm here, to, I want to hear from you. I'm not going to give a big speech, which I was relieved to hear. And uh, he said, I said right across from him at the table, he said, Tom, you go first. What, uh, what, what would you offer? And I said, well, George Voidovich and I once recommended that we raise the gas and diesel tax user fee by four cents a year for four years and index it going forward. And he interrupted me and he said, that's not enough. He said, that's not enough. He said, it should be at least 25 cents and it should be all at once. And I look around the table at my Republican friends. Their jaws are on the table. <laughs> I look at John Barrasso, my chairman of the EPW committee from Wyoming, and I wink at him. And I reach over Lane Chow sitting next to me, and, uh, and I reach over and I grab her hand and I, I squeeze it a little bit. And uh, he came back to that over and over again during the course of our meeting. 25 cents, got to be at least 25 cents, got to do it now. He said, I'll provide air cover, political protection for you. It's hard to do, but uh, I'll, be, I'll be there to give you the, the, uh, the cover you need. And, uh, when the meeting was over, uh, I walked out and I ran into a, they had a press stakeout outside the White House and uh, some cameras. And they said to me, uh, were you just in the meeting with the president on transportation? I said, yep. He said, anything interesting happened? Well, I said, as a matter of fact, it did. And he said, what? I said, the president basically embraced a 25 cent a gallon increase in the user fees, gas and diesel tax r right now. And they said, wow, this is a story. And I walked away and five minutes later, uh, one of my colleagues, Jim Inhoff, from uh, Oklahoma came through. And they said, were you in the meeting with President Trump? And I said, yes, I was. He said, yes, I was. He said, did he, did he endorse the 25 cent increase in the gas and diesel tax? And Jim said, I don't remember that. <laughs> well, I called Elaine Chow that night, and she remembered it. She remembered it, and she said the president's been talking about it for weeks. And I would just close with this. Is, uh, we lead by our example. The leaders, uh, um, uh, keep out of step when everybody else is marching to the wrong tune. As it turns out, the states are marching to the wrong tune. State uh, legislators, state governors are marching to the right tune. And uh, we'd be wise here to follow them. And I think uh, uh, the words of uh, Mark Twain are probably uh, uh, a, a great way to close. Mark Twain used to say, when in doubt, tell the truth. When in doubt, tell the truth. You will uh, amaze your friends and confound your enemies. And the truth of the matter is, we need the money. And if we want to have these systems, whether they happen to be mass transit or transit systems, or just our, our vehicles, uh, we need the money. And if things are worth having, they're worth paying for. That's the way we do business in Delaware. That's the way we need to do business in America. Thank you so much. God bless you.